marijuana toxicity in dogs can cause a lot more than just the munchies. It can also cost you a lot of money. So let's jump in. Hi, I'm veterinarian Dr. Alex. This is Our Pets Health, where I believe that dogs are part of the family and I want to help you understand and optimize their health so that they can live the full and happy life that you want for them. So marijuana contains all kinds of different chemicals. THC is the psychoactive component, and this is the compound that can cause all kinds of different problems and the toxic effect to dogs. CBD is another part of marijuana. Now this can be extracted and given independently. It's often isolated from hemp so that there's low or no THC present. And this actually has some potentially really useful medicinal value in treating different conditions in dogs. And I'll leave a link to a video on screen now. But if your dog eats marijuana, the signs of toxicity can happen really quickly, typically within about 30 to 90 minutes, depending on what form it's been ingested. What happens as well is the THC, it gets actually stored in the body's fat. And this means that it's released slowly over the course of a few days sometimes. So once the toxic effect has started, it can be maintained for several days. And the symptoms of marijuana toxicity in dogs are actually probably like you'll expect. So we'll get incoordination and listlessness in the first instance, their pupils will dilate and their heart rate will slow. The next two are kind of classic for marijuana toxicity. One is that your dog might become urinary incontinent, so they'll be walking along and just dribbling urine. That's quite a classic for marijuana toxicity. Also, they develop what we call a startle response, where they'll seem to be drifting off to sleep and then kind of catch themselves, and that will happen just all the time. It might be that they almost fall over completely, or even they do fall over completely, but then they kind of jerk awake. So that startle response, again, is something that we'll often see with actually quite high levels of marijuana toxicity. Now, while they might not seem too serious, one of the big problems when it comes to treating a dog with marijuana toxicity is actually knowing that that was the problem in the first place. This is because the signs can actually look very similar to a number of other different poisons, certainly in the early stages. And the big one we need to differentiate it from is ethylene glycol or antifreeze toxicity. Now this means that if your vet doesn't know that your dog has eaten marijuana, they're going to order all kinds of different blood tests, they're going to give preventive treatments to try and protect the kidneys, to try and eliminate the potential for different toxins, and all of those can add up to quite a lot of money. It can also mean that your dog needs to stay in hospital for a lot longer than they would otherwise need to. So it's really important that if you know your dog has eaten marijuana, or they've been exposed to marijuana, or there's even just the potential that that could be the case, that you let your vet know. They're under absolutely no obligation to report that to the police, so it's important that you are honest, because it will make your dog's treatment much faster, and it will also save you a lot of unnecessary spending. Now there are urine tests that can check for marijuana and for THC. Unfortunately, there's two problems here. The first is that they do require quite a lot of urine, and the second is that there are a lot of false negatives, meaning that the test will say that the dog hasn't been exposed when actually that is what they're suffering from. So they're not accurate, they're not reliable, and generally aren't used. Instead, that diagnosis is made on the clinical signs that your dog is showing, eliminating the potential for other poisons, and also clearly knowing that your dog could potentially have eaten your marijuana stash. Now poisoning is one of the most common deadly emergencies that we see in the vet clinic. I see it all the time. And it's an emergency where the action that you take can be the difference between life and death. This is why I produced my poisoning course to help you know how to prevent this deadly emergency and also the action that you need to take should your dog eat something that they really shouldn't have. And I'll leave a link for that down in the description below. So we can treat marijuana toxicity in the first instance by making your dog vomit. This is especially important if they've only just eaten it. The problem is, is that after everything starts to be absorbed, actually making them vomit can be quite difficult because one of the benefits or one of the uses of medicinal marijuana is actually as an anti-emetic and anti-vomiting drug. So making a dog sick can be really difficult. Activated charcoal can be given to try and absorb any of the marijuana that's still in the intestine and allow it to pass out in the stools rather than to be absorbed into the body. And then for those dogs that are suffering from more serious toxicity, they're going to be put on intravenous fluids to support them. They're going to be given warming to stop them developing hypothermia, and they're going to be monitored very closely to make sure that there's no other complications. Thankfully, the chance of marijuana toxicity being fatal 
is statistically very, very small. And most dogs can get away with just being monitored, being closely confined, and put in an area where they're not going to hurt themselves. So check out this video on the 13 most deadly dog emergencies. And until next time, I'm veterinarian Dr. Alex. This is Our Pets Health, because they're family.